Hello and welcome to this mid-month update. In this video, I'm going to be going through exactly how I've been doing so far this month, giving you some good uh, profit figures for how I've done so far. And uh, yeah, just talking about how I've been progressing in my Amazon FBA business so far this month. So let's jump straight into it, shall we? How much money am I on? That's the most important thing, isn't it? Um, so let's jump straight into that. Oh, and for those of you that don't know, my name's Simon. I'm a six-figure Amazon seller in the UK. I make between eight and 10,000 a month. Anyway, let's jump straight into it, guys. So let me just move over to the profit figures for this month. So, so far this month, I am on, oh, as of the 16th of May anyway, so about halfway through, I was on £5,900, basically, with 24, 25K in sales. 65% ROI, so well on track to make £10,000 this month, as long as things carry on. So uh, excellent, very pleased with these results here. Um, and I had my best day ever, actually, that I think I've ever had. And that is, if I move over here, the tabs. Yep, here we can see I made in one day... £751 profit. Now, this was actually a little bit higher. Um, I'd sold 23 units, not 22. Um, but obviously, when I, someone obviously cancelled, so that's now gone down a little bit. And I've, uh, I think it was around 670, 680 on the day. But now, obviously, you get cancellations, refunds, things like that. So, yeah, 750 was my best day. Um, not only just this month, but I think I've ever had. So obviously, I'd love to repeat this every day. <laughs> uh, that would be a huge amount of money. But yeah, for right now, very pleased with that, of course. But yeah, going back to the monthly figures, £6,000, fantastic. So really can't complain about that. And yeah, really good results so far. And hopefully, we're well on track, or we are right now, for 10000 maybe even 11000 But let's just aim for ten. That's the main thing. So what have I been doing this month? Well, I... As I mentioned in my driving vlog, I think a few weeks ago, my plan for this month, well, I had quite a few plans. The first one was to basically try and clear out my apartment, um, trying to get all the stock out of my apartment and into Amazon and trying to make my living space a sort of Amazon free space. So you know, I've been working out of my apartment now for two years or so. I've been on and off prep centers. And now I decided, you know what, get this stuff sent in and go on full on prep center. And that's what I've been doing so far. So I've got this entire, I can never point in the right direction. This entire shelf here is pretty much gone now, full of stock. I just need to sort out this one behind me here, which has a, not too much stock on it left, really. And then these are going to come down and this is going to be more of a recording studio. So I'm going to be putting more effort into doing YouTube videos, podcasts. I might even get a sofa back there. I've got some stuff to mount actual lights onto the actual um, wall rather than having them on tripods and stuff. So this is going to be a proper studio, basically. Right now, I've just got one light over here um, to like, illuminate me. Normally, I have one over there, sort of bringing some fill light in. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're doing, basically, putting more effort into the studio to bring you guys better content, basically. Well, you know, just trying to always upgrade things, you know, from the YouTube point of view. You know, it's a good way to look at life, I suppose. Is all, yeah, every day just trying to improve something in your life by 1%. And obviously by the end of the year, yeah, you've improved yourself a lot. So if I can just try and improve something, you know, uh, every every day basically by 1%. You know, in YouTube terms, I do like, you know, am I better getting better at video editing or narration or just doing better videos or better content or better studio stuff. There's loads of things you can improve, better thumbnails, etc. In Amazon FBA, you know, you can think, look at things like, can I optimize how I pack things, how I source? Um, can I, there's all, all sorts of things you can do to try and improve basically. So every day just think about, oh, can I just improve myself by 1% today on this particular task? And you'd be surprised how uh, well you can do. So yeah, it's been slow, but I have been slowly clearing out the apartment. Um, you know, if I put more effort into it, I could get it done much quicker but I'm gonna be honest with you guys I'm absolutely fed up of packing stuff so it is a bit of a drag for me to be honest and what you don't see is in my bedroom I've got two more shelves not quite as big as these ones full of Amazon returns so this is mostly stock that needs to go into Amazon a few bits straggling bits but then I've got two more shelves that are full of Amazon returns which I've let build up now for six eight months I guess which is not great, really. So, yeah, anyway, that needs to be sorted out as well. 
not a fun task. So let's look at my list here. What else have I been working on this month? Oh yeah, so obviously I've been doing Prep Centre as well and I, um, I've been sending everything now to Prep Centre. I've been very careful to make sure that I don't get anything sent here. There's no reasons to get any items sent here really right now apart from returns. So I don't have a good system to deal with those yet. Um, but yeah, Prep Centre, I've been using that. And, you know, that showed because this month, halfway through, I got a bill for 450 470 something like that for the Prep Centre. So, you know, I've been looking probably around £1,000, £1,500 maybe, depending on what I'm sending into them uh, a month in prep costs. So that will obviously be reflected at the end of the month um, in my uh, profits. So, you know, I might be struggling to hit those 10,000 profits with, with expenses, but, you know, I'm extracting myself from the business. And that's the main goal this month is figure out good systems and things like that to extract myself from the business so that I can grow, basically. Because you can't do everything yourself. You can't, you can be, you can be a one-man band, but there's a, there's a limit on how much you can make, I think, in doing that. So that's what I decided to do anyway. And obviously I've got other focuses like YouTube and things like that, software. So stuff like that as well. So, um, yeah, and talking about systems, guys. So I've been working on trying to figure out good systems, again, to extract myself from the business. So, you know, looking at VAs, you know, I've got one VA right now. We're training him on a specific category. I can't say what it is, but, you know, um, yeah, we're doing that. Um, talking about categories, by the way, guys, um, in my Discord group, link in the description, um, I just put out a message to people saying if they want to maybe get into a group with four or five people and we do some like group sourcing. I've got a video here just showing you how to actually source a new category so you can check that out. But yeah, trying to get you know some small groups of people, sort of three, four, five people working together on a call, maybe two or three times a week, you know, spending an hour or two sourcing together. And the whole idea is that everyone's going to crowdsource all the information into one big master spreadsheet. Um, again, check out that that video I mentioned earlier. Um, and yeah, hopefully everyone can work together to try and you know source and learn a category. And you know, or even if it's just everyone wants to source together, they can do it at any category they want or multiple categories. Point is, if you crowdsource this kind of stuff with a limited number of people, then you can uh, accelerate the growth of it as well. So if you're interested in that, leave me a message in the uh, in the. You know, comment section of this video um, and then I'll get in touch with you. Cool. So what else have been doing? Um, yeah, using uh, VAs. Um, I've been using AI a bit more, actually. So not necessarily for FBA right now. I'm still learning how to use AI, chat GPT and stuff like that. But I used it for some of my thumbnails for YouTube, things like that. So creating logos um, along those lines. So I'm starting to utilize more AI now, I'm trying to introduce that more into my life. Um, it's not something that pops into my head right away when I've got a problem, but I'm slowly trying to train myself to use AI more, basically use chat GPT more, um, when I've got a problem or something I need to do. So that's something I'm just trying to rewire my brain around that basically, cause I'm just, you know, an old school Google, everything basically kind of person. So that's taking some, uh, interesting things. And, you know, I, I did an interview with a guy called Callum. Um, probably a few weeks back now, uh, this guy, this well, kid, I should say, 19-year-old <laughs> kid, uh, just crushing it with AI. So it was really illuminating to hear him use it. And obviously it inspired me to get more into using AI. And he's doing a, so check out that video. It's in, uh, I'll put a link in the description. Or you can check out my channel anyway um, to find that. Um, and yeah, he's starting a YouTube channel where he's going to talk about AI and using FBA, which I think is going to be a fantastic channel. So, because I think that'd be a very interesting topic for a lot of people. And I'll try and do some more content on that as well once I learn it. So, I don't teach stuff that I don't know, basically. So, I'm still learning it myself. Uh, let's have a look at what else. So, yeah, one of the things I was working is like try to get better at replans. So, I've got a few replans, and you know, sometimes I let them lapse because I've just busy with other things and then I have to scramble to get them back in stock and I lose buy box percentage and it's not that great really so I've been working better on doing replans um you know trying to get better systems in place notice when they're coming out of stock especially with summer coming I've definitely got some replans that have been going up in sort of sales velocity so it's just hard to kind of stay on top of these things basically and trying to figure out how much to order you know, obviously when you order, it might take three to five days to arrive at the prep center. Prep center is slower than I am. So, you know, it, well, that's one downside, I suppose, of prep centers is they're not as quick as you might be. So, you know, when I used to get items sent to me, I'd pack, if it, if it was urgent and I was low stock, I'd pack them right there and then get them out that day. Prep centers take two or three days, you know, so, um, yeah, that's something to consider as well. I just need to tweak the kind of ways that I do, um, 
you know, replens and stuff like that. Now, before we go on to the other things I've been doing this month, I want to mention my sponsor, Profit Protector Pro. Um, now, this is a fantastic repricer that I've now been using for six to seven weeks. Um, it's fantastic. It's got some really clever sort of um, algorithmic strategies that you can use to reprice your items. And to be honest, this has been a bit of a game changer for me. I've noticed I've made more money. My profits have been going up since the previous months mainly just because I changed the repricer. Um, and this thing's just way smarter at trying to reprice items. And, you know, it tries to push the boundaries of how much you can actually get um, for your items. So a normal repricer, um, like a rule-based one, might only just, like, max the bottom, you know, the minimum price. Whereas Profit Protector Pro, depending on what strategy you use, you know, tries to push that price up. So let's say the minimum price is £100. It might try and put the price to 105 See if Amazon keeps the buy box. Then it'll go to 110 115 And maybe it loses the buy box of 115 so it'll come back to 110 So it's really clever. So you might, you know, that's making you £10 extra, basically, <laughs> on that item. So it's very clever how it does it. And it's made me more money as well. So I wouldn't recommend it, guys, if I didn't use it myself and I didn't actually like it. So, you know, that's one thing you can trust about me. I only recommend stuff that I... Uh, that I actually think is good and use myself. So yeah, guys, check that out, link in description. So another thing I'm gonna be thinking about as well with the replen side is possibly passing on the purchasing of all those replens onto a virtual assistant. So right now I've got a VA, I share it with some other people. I might actually consider going back to having my own VA and training them on a specific category that I'm doing and basically totally extracting myself from that category, letting them deal with it, let them research new products in that category, order the replenishables, um, uh, you know, actually purchasing stuff as well. That's the main thing as well. So having them do that exact kind of, you know, the whole part of that category will just be them. So that's something I'm considering doing. Obviously, it's an extra cost to take on a VA. The main thing I need to do is make sure I systematize everything. So I'm just making sure that I have good systems in place. I understand exactly what I'm doing when it comes to searching, what sites I do. And this is why I create this master sheet that I'll, again, put in description. So you can have like this whole big sheet of, uh, it's like a big database, essentially, of how to like source a specific category. It's got all the sites on there. You can then rank the sites on how good they are. You know, Because obviously, let's say you're going to search like, you know, as a great example I always use is uh, <laughs> sitting and... <laughs> sitting knitting and sewing um you know there might be a hundred sites that sell these kind of things basically but uh, realistically out of a hundred sites probably only two to three to five are going to be the main ones you order from so it's just kind of finding those whittling them down then knowing what brands to look for when what sales to look for and then obviously doing your replans as well so that's something you need to kind of systematize a little bit document it so then you can teach it to a virtual assistant and you know i talk about again i'll put a video description uh, below sort of five myths. There's a video I did this month. Uh, five myths or misconceptions about Amazon. And in one of those, I mention um, that VAs are like, you shouldn't get a VA unless you know what you're doing. I, I get asked all the time, should I get a VA son? I'm like, no. If you can't even source yourself, then why should you get a VA? How are you going to teach them to source? Anyway, check that link in the description anyway, because it's a really good video, the five uh, misconceptions, the five myths. Um, that I see people do with Amazon FBA. It's a really good video, to be fair. So I give out loads of gold, guys, loads of knowledge. I'm always dropping knowledge on you guys. So hopefully you can soak it in um, and, yeah, become successful on Amazon as well. So, um, but, yeah, there's some really good stuff in that video. Right, let's have a look. Um, oh, yeah. Um, so using some more software. So I've decided I'm going to start using some more... Well, giving it a go. It's a bit of an experiment, to be fair. But using um, sort of, what's the word? The software that basically finds leads for you. There's like one that I'm using right now that I'm just testing out is Arbisource. Again, I'll put a link in the description for that if you want to sign up to that. That's an affiliate link, helps me out. But, um, you know, I'm still testing it out right now. Um, I've not utilized it fully, but um, that's something I'm testing out now, basically, is utilizing software more like that to see if I can find some leads here and there. You know, I'm not expecting to find loads of leads. I don't know yet. I'm still playing around with that software. Um, I know they've done a lot of work recently to improve it um, because in the past I was a little bit um, when I did play with it um, there were a lot of mismatches and stuff I know the guy who runs it he actually reached out to me and said you know I saw your comment that um, there's lots of mismatches on uh, the stuff that they find but they've actually been working really hard on making a whole new sort of matching algorithm 
So I'm giving that another go. Um, I'm not recommending it right now. I'm, you know, just testing it out. But if you do want to give it a go, link in the description. Um, you know, it's always worth trying these things out, I guess. You know, just going for a month or so, giving it a go. But yeah, if I find that it's very useful, I find some good leads from it. Actually, I'll be honest, to be fair, I did actually play with it for about an hour and I did find one lead, to be fair. So that actually wasn't too bad. So, but obviously now the main thing to look at is not only did I find a lead, which I did, to be fair, which is actually quite a, quite a good lead as well. Is that lead going to brick? That's the next problem. So how many people are using the software? Is, this, is it going to brick? So not a recommendation just yet, but it's looking promising. Let's put it like that. So, and that lead I did find was fantastic, actually. It was a really good lead. So I was like, okay, that's pretty good. So yeah, but obviously we need to find out how it ends up in two or three months and understand that product. Is it something I need to buy and hold for two months and the price comes back? You know, this is all stuff you need to learn with these products, basically. So, yeah, um, if you want to give it a go, guys, link in the description, sign up for a month, give it a go. You might be surprised, basically. They do so many sites. They sort they, they um, scan so many sites and stuff. So, yeah, worth a look anyway. Um, what else? Yeah, I need to figure out how to do returns. I know my friend Jacob on Discord is starting a sort of prep center, mainly dealing with returns. So I'm looking forward to that potentially coming online so I can send all my returns to him. Um, because yeah, it's a pain. I just don't have a good system for it. And it's very hard to outsource that pro you know, process, I guess. So it's a problem I've been struggling with for a while, basically. And that's why my bedroom is full of returns, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, it kind of sucks. And I've got actually got a few, you can't see them up there as well. I've got like a laptop that's been returned. I need to look into that at some point. Um, I'm trying to think what else is up there. A few other bits as well. So, oh man, terrible. <laughs> But yeah, so overall, month going really well. Uh, I'm progressing, so hopefully by the end of the month, my goal is to get this entire office cleared out. That's the main thing. Get all my returns out of my bedroom and either onto eBay or into my warehouse. Um, to be fair, I, my warehouse was full of stock. Um, all my replens, I kept like a two or three month supply in there. I've actually decided to just send those all into Amazon and just take the you know take the hit on the storage costs because storage isn't too expensive on Amazon really, so it's not too bad. So I was like, you know what, I'm already paying like three. I think I I pay three thirty a month for a two hundred square foot um storage space. So um, I'm now I'm eventually I might get rid of that to be honest, but right now I'm moving all the stock out of there, all my replens. And things like that, and like sort of longer term holds, selling to Amazon, take the hit on that storage cost, and then put all my returns into there, and then deal with them over time. Just getting them out of my apartment, that's the main thing. And then, yeah, get rid of the warehouse if I can. Um, ultimate goal is to go traveling. So, um, yeah, that's my ultimate goal. It's traveling for nine months of the year. So, I need to be extracting myself from the business and have some good systems in place uh, to run the business and obviously grow as well. So, you know, I'm hoping to get to that 10,000 profit a month regularly and then from there go to 15 and 20. So, cool guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed that sort of mid month update. Um, you know, um, yeah, I don't know if you guys normally I just do, do like a monthly update on my profit and progress, but I thought maybe I'd throw one in mid-month to see how it's going on. If you guys like it, leave a comment in the description. Um, leave me a like, whatever you need to do. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. I'd really appreciate it. I'm trying to grow the channel, of course. Putting more effort into it. And yeah, I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.